Here's your faithfulness. I will rest in your promises. My confidence is your faithfulness. I will rest in your promises. My confidence is your faithfulness. Good morning. This is the crew. All right. You know what this means? It means that everyone needs to sing out really loud, okay? So that it sounds like we're a full, full crowd. Let's all stand and sing. We're going to sing a little bit about heaven today. Oh, 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 heaven is in my heart. Oh, 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 oh. Heaven is in my heart. The kingdom of our God is here. Heaven is in my heart. The presence of His majesty. Heaven is in my heart. Do you believe it? Oh, 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 oh. Heaven is in my heart. My heart. Oh, 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 oh. Heaven is in my heart. And in his presence joy abounds. Heaven is in my heart. The light of holiness surrounds. Heaven is in my heart. Do you believe it? Oh, oh, oh. Heaven is in my heart. My heart. Oh, 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 oh. Heaven is in my heart. We are a temple of the Lord. Heaven is in my heart. We worship Him in one accord. Heaven is in my heart. Do you believe it? Oh, 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 oh. Heaven is in my heart. My heart. Oh, 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 oh. Heaven is in my heart. Please be seated. Good morning, church. Uh, I actually have a rule of thumb with youth group classes. Uh, if we ever have just enough that would fit in my car, we have class at IHOP. I'm thinking we can squeeze. I don't know. Uh, no, but it's so good to have you here this morning. And it's so good, even no matter how many we have, just to, to come together and worship God in, in any fashion we can. Uh, so as we praise God this morning, uh, I praise him for safe travels for all of us here and also on the way home after this. Uh, but most importantly, right now, uh, let's praise God together. Just please join me in prayer. Father, we thank you so much for this morning, getting us here safely. I've got to pray that in all things, this service glorifies you, uh, God, and not just glorifies you, but changes us. Uh, Father, may we praise you with all that we have and all of our strength, that in all things, Father, your kingdom is seen today, and not just here in this building, but Father, afterwards, wherever we go, let your light shines. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Good morning to the three of you. <laughs> um, normally what we would do is say, everybody come on down, but it, in these days, can't do that. I received a, uh, a message this week about a young man, fairly young man, he's got several kids, uh, who's going to, um, well, he was preparing for a half marathon went in to see his doctor and they determined that he had stage four kidney disease. Uh, he was going to go to Kansas City uh, to have it done. He's from Northwest Arkansas. Uh, and that didn't work for some reason. They were gonna go to the Mayo Clinic. And uh, he also is going to not only have a kidney replacement, but also some kind of stem cell replacement. And uh, he was gonna go to the Mayo Clinic and that didn't work out because they're not approved yet. So guess where they're coming? Uh, they're coming to Omaha. Uh, there's his brother's going to give him the kidney, uh, but uh, 
I think it's uh, the 15th is when he's supposed to arrive, he and his wife. Family, we've got places for all of them to stay. Uh, but we were going to uh, take up a contribution today. You know, it, it not only does it cost uh, for them to be here, but it costs food and uh, different things like that. So um, everything seems to be taken care of, but that if you want to give some money to that, give it to one of the elders, give it to me, and uh, we'll make sure it gets uh, to the Brazils, is their name, Brazil, B-R-A-Z-I-L-E. Um, they're members at the Bentonville Church of Christ. Uh, I uh, had gotten a, a message from Charity Mohorn who goes to Robinson Avenue Church of Christ, and uh, it just shows you our interconnection. Uh, Patty Sykes uh, emailed us and said, I am so excited they're coming to Omaha. They were supposed to be up here. We had everything in place. Glad you're there. You can take care of them. And so... Let's pray for, I think his name is Darren, uh, Darren and Melissa Brazil, and uh, his family. And then let's pray for people who are driving on the snow. So pray with me. Father, we're grateful. Uh, you love us. You care for us. You, you live inside us. And uh, we sing about heaven being in our hearts. I pray that not only will heaven be in our hearts, but it'll show up on our faces. And today we have this special prayer for the Brazil family and for uh, the things that they're having to go through. I pray, uh, I'm, I'm thankful that he has a brother who's willing to give up his kidney. Uh, I'm thankful that uh, there are those who have stepped up uh, to, uh, to keep them. Uh, I'm thankful for uh, just uh, medical facilities like we have here in Omaha, and I pray that uh, everything will go well. Father, I, I also pray about the weather and those who are out in it. Uh, we pray for safety and just watch over them and keep them safe. Thank you for loving us and keeping us in your care. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's stand some more. <clears throat> to Canaan's land, I'm on my way where the soul never dies. My darkest night will turn to day where the soul never dies. No sad farewell. dies and I will spend eternity where the soul never dies no sad farewells no tears in eyes where all is love and the soul Across the foam where the soul never dies, it shines to light the shores of hope, and the soul never dies. No sad farewell, no tear dim dies. On my way to that fair land where the soul never dies, where there will be no parting hand, and the soul never dies, no sad farewell, 
no tears in night. Where all is the love and the soul never dies. As I travel through life with its trouble and strife, I have a glorious hope to give cheer on the way. Soon my toll will be yours, and I'll rest on that shore where the night has been turned into day. Up in Paradise Valley, by the side of the river, river of life. Up in Paradise Valley. Wonderful valley will be free from all pain and all strife. There we shall live in the rose tinted garden neath the shade of the evergreen tree. How I long for the paradise valley where the beauty of heaven I'll see. As I roam the hillside, or I list to the tide, as I pluck the sweet flowers that grow in the dale, there is there a land bright and fair, where perennial flowers ne'er fail. Up in Paradise Valley, by the side of the river, River of life, up in heaven, the valley, the wonderful valley, will be free from all pain and all strife. There we shall live in the rose tinted garden, neath the shade of the evergreen tree. How I long for the paradise valley. Where the beauty of heaven I'll see. Though your garden is rare, it is not to compare with the flowers that bloom in the garden above. In the midst of it grows Sharon's perfect sweet rose. Tis the wonderful flower of love. Up in paradise, wonderful valley by the side of the river, river of life. Up and up in the valley, the wonderful valley will be free from all pain and all strife. There, there we shall live in the rose tinted. God underneath the shade of the evergreen tree. How I long for the paradise valley, where the beauty of heaven I'll see. Please be seated. Good morning, I'll be reading uh, Philippians 3, 12 through 21. Now that I have, uh, not that I have already uh, obtained all this, uh, or have already made, been made perfect, but I press on to take hold of that, for, of that for which Christ Jesus took hold of me. Brothers, I do not consider myself yet to have taken hold of it, but one thing I do, forgetting what is behind and straying toward what is ahead, I press on towards the goal to win the prize for which God has called me heavenward in Jesus Christ. All of, this who are, all of us who are mature should take such uh, a view of things. And if on some point you think differently, that too God will make clear to you. Only let us live up to what we have already obtained. Join with others in following my example, brothers, and take note of those who live according to the pattern we gave you. For as I have often told you before and now say again, 
even with tears, many le live as enemies of the cross of Christ. Their destination is destruction, their God is their stomach, and their glory is in their shame. Their mind is on earthly things, but our citizenship is in heaven, and we eagerly await a Savior from there, the Lord Jesus Christ, who by the power that enables him to bring everything under his control, will transform our lowly bodies so that we will be like the, his glorious body. Normally, this is the first Sunday in, in uh, February. Normally, I'd call those down uh, who have birthdays this month. But I think I'll delay that till uh, next week, and uh, we'll just do that then. I changed my sermon topic today, if that's okay. Well, tough. Uh, <laughs> you had already picked the songs out. Uh, and yet, in a lot of ways, uh, it's, it's still uh, the same thing. I, I, I've been reading a book uh, called uh, The Case for Grace by Lee Strobel. And uh, I may have changed the sermon topic, but not the theme. And that is that we are to be transformed. Listen to 1 Corinthians chapter 15. And verse 10, Paul is defending uh, his discipleship uh, to the Christians in Corinth. And, oh, it's not showing up back there. That's why I keep punching buttons. There it is. By the grace of God, I am what I am. And his grace to me was not without effect. I think that's important. It was not without effect. It did change me. If you look at the message, it says, but because God was so gracious, so very generous, here I am. And I'm not about to let his grace go to waste. Grace changes us. It transforms us. It moves us. We don't like the word change. Uh, and, and I know some of you probably think, oh, I'm, I'm fine with that, but there you go. It's on there. <laughs> we have a conversation usually going on with our eyes, and y'all can't see it, but uh, uh, let, me, let me move ahead here. There, there we go. All right. We don't like the word change. We get into routines and, dare I say it, ruts. And we don't like to, to deviate at all from those kind of things. My mother-in-law, and I've talked about this, uh, had certain routines. I believe it was Wednesday she vacuumed. Uh, there were certain days that she got her hair done. And you probably needed to let her know if you were coming or if something were going on during that time so she could rearrange her schedule. And even worse, I remember one time uh, my brother, my brother Don, uh, was going up to Bel Air, Ohio. Or there's a little town up there called St. Joe. It's just right outside of Neffs. I'm sure you all have heard of all of those. And, uh, and he was going to go see my cousin Cindy and, uh, and my Aunt Bernie. And he hadn't been there in years. In fact, I haven't seen them since uh, the early 80s, I believe it was. So, I mean, we're talking years since he's been, been there to see them. And he was up there for something, I forget what it was. And he called them up and he said, hey, I'm coming by. I'm going to come by on, and I forget what day it was. I think it may have been a Thursday. And you would think they would have said, oh, that's wonderful, Don. We're, they called him Donnie. Where it's wonderful, we, we can't wait to see you. You know what they said? Eh, well, that's the day we go to the grocery store. And that's kind of the way we are sometimes, isn't it? But learning is change, isn't it? From ignorance, and I don't use that word in a, in a negative context, but in ignorance 
to knowledge is change. When you learn your multiplication tables, you changed. Paul said, don't be conformed to the world, but be transformed. He said, I want you to change. Don't be squeezed by the culture and environment of the world. And if you live that way, you're going to change. Don't let the world squeeze you like Play-Doh. So let me ask you a question, and it's up on the screen already. How have you been transformed since you became a disciple of Jesus? What's different about you? Have you grown? In the book of Romans, Paul wrestles with the Jews about the law. And they were justing, justifying themselves by the way that they followed the law. And, and so they did things right. And they checked off their lists. But Paul explains to them the concept of grace. And I would point to this group of Christians and almost laugh at them because of their short-sightedness. But don't we do the same things? Don't we act in the same manner? Let me work hard for my salvation and let's let God use his grace somewhere else. Or give me grace, but I want you to be hard on those people. In the Beatitudes, and if you've been uh, keeping up with our study on Sunday uh, afternoons with our study on humility. He talks about being poor in spirit, which the word that he uses there is just destitute. He says, until you understand the, the complete destitution of your soul, you're not going to understand what grace is. And he says, then we mourn. And, and I used to think it was mourn for our sins, but uh, many of the commentaries and, and the things that I've read and the, and, and the things that I've seen in Scripture, I think it goes beyond just mourning for our sins. It probably goes on to mourn for the condition of the world. And in fact, the word for mourn that's used there, the Septuagint, uses the strongest word it can for mourn. It's the word that they used when Jacob learned when he thought Joseph was dead. We need God's grace, and we need it badly. There are a number of peers in California, and if I said, in order to be saved, what you need to do is to jump from the pier to Hawaii. And so you got back, and you went as far as you could, and you ran, and you took a leap you fell woefully short. And so what you did, you went to work, you exercised, and you found a new exercise regimen, and you worked on your legs, and you worked on the, the whole broad jump kind of thing, and you came several months later to the same pier, and you ran and jumped, and sure enough, you landed six inches further than you did before. Really, how much closer are you to Hawaii? That's what grace does for us. It spans the distance. And it doesn't mean that we have to be perfect. It says, I want you to walk in the light. Our model is Jesus himself. Nobody else. We're to become transformed to be like him. We have destitution. We have mourning. But the third one is meek. And he says, I want you to be humble or gentle is the word. I want you to understand all that. We can't really understand God's grace until we understand adoption. I, I appreciate families like the Sykes and, and like... Uh, Heather Smalley, and like the Delgados, and like anybody else, I'm, I started naming names, and I'm in trouble when I start doing that. Uh, but, but all of those 
who really take on adoption. J.I. Packer in his book, Knowing God, says this. He says, to be right, oh, I'm missing that. To be right with God, To be right with God the judge is a great thing, but to be loved and cared for by God the Father is greater. I came across uh, a thing by Lee Strobel this week, and uh, it was uh, just amazing. And, And I was just blown away by the story And I'm not going to get into all the story, but I'll tell you just a brief background. It's a story of a little girl who uh, she thinks her father may have been an American GI from Korea. But her mother, of course, was obviously Korean, but there was something different about her. Her skin was different. Her, her hair was curly, and, and Koreans just didn't have that. And so she was ostracized. She was called a name. And I, I, like I said, I don't want to tell you the whole story because I want you to, to, to buy the book and read it. But, but the thing is, as she comes to this orphanage, this family adopts her. And, and the thing is, it's an, uh, a missionary family that's come to Korea. They adopt her. And, and she doesn't know how to react. But I want to pick up the story. The name of the missionary family was the Mer- Merwins. It says the Merwins had expected to adopt a boy and name him Stephen. So they gave their new little girl the name Stephanie. Their house in Korea, modest by Western standards, seemed huge to her. I'd never seen a refrigerator, she says, a flush toilet or a bed before. I thought, wow, this will be a fun place to work. They even had eggs, which only affluent Koreans could afford. They cleaned me up and gave me antibiotics and got me healthy. And they kept feeding me, tucking me into bed, buying new clothes, but never putting me to work. Lee Strobel asked, did that confuse you? Yes, I wondered why for several months, but I was afraid to bring it up to them. And we'd go into the village and everybody would treat me like I was something wonderful. And I couldn't understand I had been a Tugi, and that's T-O-O-G-E-E. But now I was being treated like a princess. And then one day a girl said to me, you smell American. I said, what do you mean? And she said, you smell like cheese. Korean children always said foreigners smelled like cheese. And I said, no, I am... I'm, an, uh, I'm not an American, but those Americans are really funny. They haven't put me to work yet. They're really treating me nice. And she looked at me with surprise and said, Stephanie, don't you realize that you're their daughter? That idea had never occurred to me. I said, no, I'm, I'm not their daughter. And she said, yes, yes, you are. You are their daughter. And I was astonished, and I turned and ran out of the room and up the hill toward my house, thinking to myself, I'm their daughter. I'm their daughter. I'm their daughter. Oh, that's why I've been treated this way. That's why no one's beating me. That's why nobody's calling me a tugi. I'm their daughter. And I ran into the house to my mom who was sitting in a chair and I declared in Korean, I'm your daughter. And she didn't speak Korean yet, but a worker said to my mom, she's saying, she's your daughter. 
And with that, big tears began to run down my mommy's face. And she nodded to me and said, Yes, Stephanie, you're my daughter. He asks, How did that make you feel? And Stephanie had been speaking so candidly about her life, including unthinkable tr mistreatment and suffering, abandonment and rejection, humiliation and pain. But now she was flustered. This time words failed her. It was, she began. Then she threw up her hands. There are no words, Lee. There are simply no words. Sometimes language cannot contain grace. About 15 years ago, I received an email from a guy wanting to know if, if we were a, a good church. He was very legalistic in his approach. He said, you can't do social activities. You can't have a kitchen in the, in the building. And he wanted me to be able to preach against topics that he deemed important. My response was, I didn't think we were the kind of church he was looking for. And as his second response, and by the way, I probably should have just kept it short, but I didn't. I've learned over the years. And he said, I assume you are a three, John 3.16 church by the tone of your message, one that reaches the part about God loving us and skips the rest of the Bible. And you know, I took that as a compliment. Not that we skip the rest of the Bible, but the emphasis is on God's love. There are a number of scriptures that I want to just Put one right after another. Romans chapter 8. Oh, there we go. Verse 15. The spirit you received does not make you slaves, so that you live in fear again. Rather, the spirit you received brought about your adoption to sonship. And by him we cry, Abba, Father. Romans 8, 23, not only so, but we ourselves who have the fruits, first fruits of the Spirit grown inwardly as we wait eagerly for our adoption to sonship, the redemption of our bodies. Romans 9, for I wish that I myself were cursed and cut off from Christ for the sake of my people, those of my own race, the people of Israel. Theirs is the adoption to sonship. Theirs, the divine glory, the covenants, the receiving of the law, the temple worship, and the promises. Theirs are the patriarchs. And from them is traced the human history of the Messiah, who is God over all, forever praised. Amen. Galatians chapter 4. When the time set had fully come, God sent his son, born of a woman, born under the law, to redeem those under the law that we might receive adoption to sonship. Because you are his sons. And God sent the spirit of his son into our hearts. The spirit who calls out, Abba, Father. Finally, in Ephesians 1. For he chose us in him before the creation of the world to be holy and blameless in his sight, in love. In love he predestined us for adoption to sonship through Jesus Christ in accordance with his pleasure and will to the praise of his glorious grace which he has freely given to us in the one he loves. beginning I said we must 
grow in Christ. We must change. But there is one thing that never changes. And that is how much God loves you. He's coming on the clouds. Kings and kingdoms will bow down. And every chain will break as broken hearts declare His praise. For who can stop the Lord Almighty? Our God is the Lion, the Lion of Judah. He is roaring with power and fighting our battles. And every knee will bow before Him. Our God is the Lamb, the Lamb that was slain for the sin of the world. His blood breaks the chains and every the lion and the lamb every knee will bow before him so open up the gate make way before the king of kings the God who comes to save is here to set the captives free for who can stop the lord almighty our god is the lion the lion of judah he is roaring with power and fighting our battles and every knee will bow before him. Our God is the Lamb, the Lamb that was slain for the sin of the world. His blood breaks the chains, and every knee will bow before the Lion and the Lamb. Every knee will bow before Him. For who can stop the Lord Almighty? Who can stop the Lord Almighty? Who can stop the Lord Almighty? Who can stop the Lord? Our God is the Lion, the Lion of Judah. He is roaring with power and fighting our battles. And every knee will bow before Him. Our God is the Lamb, the Lamb that was slain for the sin of the world. His blood breaks the chains, and every knee will bow before the Lion and the Lamb. Every knee will bow before the lion and the lamb. Every knee will bow before him. Worthy is the lamb. Worthy
family. Jim, good lesson. I do have to agree that grace is one of those hard things that, especially I feel like here in America, that we like to give grace, but in some way we have a hard time trying to accept grace ourselves. We feel like we need to earn this, this blessing, earn this privilege, earn this for ourselves. But like Jim said, at some point you got to realize that you, you're not going to get there. You can't be perfect. And God realizes that, and that's why he sent Jesus for our sakes, because up until that point you would sacrifice the perfect, the most unblemished blood sacrifice that you could provide, and that would push your sins off to a further date. And it was only because we had the perfect sacrifice of Jesus that our sins are forgiven. And we can't, we can't earn that for ourselves. We just have to accept that. We got to accept that grace from God and be able to be appreciative for it. So as we partake of this um, unleavened bread and this fruit of the vine, please remember the great sacrifice that our Lord performed for our sakes, and that it's through grace that we will get to heaven, not through our own means or methods. If you'll pray with me. Dear Lord in heaven, we thank you so much for this new day, this new opportunity that we can gather here and worship you, dear Lord. We ask now that as we partake of these emblems that represent your son's body and his blood, that we do so in a well and pleasing manner. Pray that we will cast our minds back to that day that we will recall the great sacrifice, the pain, the suffering that our Lord suffered for our sakes that we might be able to, we might be able to live with you in heaven. Dear Lord, I pray that you'll help us and guide us. Please let us accept your grace, dear Lord. We pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. I don't know about you, but I grew up in an old church where the average age of the, uh, of the members was at least in the 60s. So the, the phrase um, separate and apart uh, part, uh, always came up when we were doing the communion and the, uh, the offering. 
separate and apart from this communion, from this Lord's Supper, we are going to give thanks and pray for the offering that we give to the church. So, separate and apart, we will give thanks and we will pray for this offering, this money that we will monetarily give so that this building can run, the services that we provide can continue, the outreaches can have funding. So please, uh, please pray with me. Dear Lord in heaven, we thank you so much for all the many great things that you give and everything you provide. We know that all good things in this life come through you. The food that we eat, the clothes on our backs, the shelter over our head, the fact that we can survive on this planet comfortably, dear Lord, we, we know that all these things come from you. We ask now that as we give back a small portion of what you have given to us, that this money will be used to expand the borders of your kingdom, will be used in a good and pleasing manner to you, dear Lord. We pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Good morning, church. It's good to see you all here today. Obviously, the weather is playing a, a big role in our our numbers today, but we're glad that you are here. I have a couple of uh, announcements that I want to uh, mention. First of all, last night we uh, we got the word from uh, Doris Marr that she is requesting prayers for her son Gary, who's hospitalized at Lakeside Hospital, and uh, they're drawing bubbles uh, off of his lungs, and uh, we want to keep him in our prayers. I uh, want to remind people of the uh, scholarship uh, for graduating seniors that's been made available. Uh, if you have a graduating senior, uh, please uh, contact Bart, Floria, Caleb Smith, or Larry Becker for more information and to get an application. Uh, there has been a very generous gift in that regard, and it can be very helpful uh, for our young people that are starting off in college next year. Uh, also, Brent Bannister uh, has been our deacon over uh, our missions program for a number of years, and Brent is uh, hoping to form a bit of a team uh, to work in that area. And if that's something you'd be interested in, please get a hold of Brent, and uh, he would be happy to have some people come alongside him and work with him uh, with our missions efforts. Uh, finally, we do have the uh, SOS picnic, I guess, or the delivery uh, for uh, February 13th, if, um, as in lieu of the uh, traditional banquet. And uh, if you uh, would like to have a meal delivered, uh, please get a hold of Caleb or get a hold of the office. We do have a lot of people on our prayer list, uh, and so please look at the bulletin and the announcements as they come out for that. Um, I would like to read a, uh, a little uh, piece that I came across uh, here recently uh, in closing. And it has to do with uh, uh, recognizing Jesus when we see him. Would you recognize Jesus? Interestingly, people portray Jesus according to their culture. Some artwork shows him as a light-skinned, blue-eyed Scandinavian. I have seen pictures showing Jesus as a black-skinned, dark-eyed African. I have also seen pictures showing him as a man with typical oriental facial features. The closest picture physically is one that shows Jesus with characteristic Jewish features. The fact is that all these pictures are correct. However, all of them must fit the description of Matthew 25. In that passage, Jesus gives six different scenarios that tell us how you could recognize Jesus in someone that's standing before you. Those six scenarios describe Jesus as being one who is hungry, thirsty, a stranger needing a place to sleep, naked, sick, and imprisoned. Jesus tells his followers who had taken care of people with these problems that Jesus was the one they had cared for. Many people are looking for Christ with the wrong standards is how to recognize him. 
So this week, we might see Jesus in an unexpected place. And uh, I encourage you that when you come into that situation, remember, we're seeing Jesus in those that are in need. Would you bow with me? Dear Father, we thank you so much for all that you've done for us. We thank you for uh, providing us a, a warm place to meet, for providing the means that those who, who uh, are unable to be here or have, and cannot be here can, can be a part of this uh, service uh, through technology. Father, we thank you for all that you provide for taking care of us and for guiding us and directing us. We ask, Father, that you will continue to watch over us and provide for us and help us to see those who need our help. We pray all these things, Father, in Jesus' name, amen. I want you to close your eyes for a moment. I want you to picture what heaven is going to be like. Picture standing before the throne room of God, of seeing Jesus face to face, the angels, people that have gone before us, and the feeling that you're going to have knowing that there's no more tears, there's no more trouble, there's no more hardship. And the joy that you have, the grace and the love that you've been given. What's it going to be like? Let's all stand and sing with your eyes wide open, of course. When I'm there with you in heaven, what a wondrous joy will be. Gathered with the angel chorus, standing by the glassy sea. Such a thought is hard to fathom in the presence of my King. And with countless ones forgiven, gathered round the throne to sing glory and honor worthy is the Lamb glory and honor worthy is the All the ways you reign supreme Even death can't hold the vastness Or approach this awesome theme You are God and to your glory We will worship and abide In your presence there forever We'll be happy to reside glory and honor worthy is the land. Uh-huh.
God, you are worthy. You are holy. You are just. And you are full of mercy and grace. God, may we be like you. May we be like Jesus in this world that's not our home. In Jesus we pray. Amen.